Good morning. Aloha from the Valley Isle of Maui. I haven't spoke to you, dear brothers and sisters, for a while. Not that I'm anything. Uh, I don't have, I mean, I have a YouTube station, but nobody subscribes. If you want to subscribe, do so. Uh, I guess click that thing, the thumbs up thing. I don't even know what that's all about, but I guess it has something to do with getting it known to people. Or if you want to do that, that's fine. But hey, it is March the 6th of 2024. And I completely forgot that the Shepherds Conference was going on at Grace Community Church uh, in Sun Valley, California, and it was being broadcast live. So I watched the first two speakers today. The first speaker, John MacArthur. Love my brother, John. And I hope I got the second person right, their name. Mike Riccardi, I believe is his name. He's also a staff member at Grace Community. Awesome, awesome messages. Sanctification was the first message, uh, a message that 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 was on John's heart today. Uh, something's been on his heart for a while. Talking about, uh, we talk about justification and glorification, um, awesome doctrines of the of the Word of God, and and ones that we we live in uh, by the Holy Spirit in in His teaching. But sanctification is one that we kind of forget, and. Um, it really comes down to the obedience that we need to have in our Lord, in our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Obedience to his word. Um, it was an excellent, excellent study. And John based it on 2 Corinthians chapter 10 uh, as Paul defended his authority uh, to the church there in Corinth. But then uh, Mike McCarty today, uh, his was on truth, the truth, the absolute truth of the Word of God and how that is attacked in today's uh, post-modernism uh, world that we live in. That truth is relative and anything can be the truth. If it's truth to one person but not the truth to the other, we can't put our truths on somebody else's truth. Uh, that's all a lie. The truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, when the Lord, our Lord stood before Pilate and Pilate said, what is truth? Well, he was looking at truth. It is our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but through him. Uh, and the word of God is truth. The truth incarnate, right? Right? So anyhow, I just wanted to touch on a few things today, and, and um, I don't really have any kind of a title for this, but I'm just kind of going over uh, the first few things that were taught by our brother John MacArthur and Mike Riccardi today. I hope I got his name right. But here's what John spoke on today. He had many, many other scriptures before he got to the, to the, the meat of his scripture, which was 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'll just start off in verse 1. Now, now I, Paul, myself plead with you by the gentleness and forbearance of Christ. I who am humble when face to face with you, but courageous towards you when absent. But I beg that when I am present, I need not act so courageously with the confidence that I consider to daringly use against some who consider us as if we walked according to the flesh. There were some there in the church of Corinth that accused Paul of walking in the flesh. As odd as that sounds, he was speaking the truth courageously because the church of Corinth was in error for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the tearing down of strongholds. In other words, of lies, of incorrect doctrine and theology. That's what we do as born-again Christians. That's what our pastors need to do and to teach the, the sheep in the flock. We need to tear down 
false doctrine, false theology. And we will be accused of walking in the flesh when that happens. All right? For the weapons of our warfare, this is verse 4, for the weapons of our warf warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the tearing down of strongholds. As we tear down speculations and every lofty thing, every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to the obedience of of Christ. That's why we can't give the advice to a grandma that they should go in support of a gay or transgender wedding. That's why we can't do that. And if we have a brother or sister or pastor who does so, they have to be confronted because they're disobeying the truth of God, the truth of the gospel. We can never, ever fall subject to the culture the present culture, we have to, in love and obedience, strive by the word of God to correct the culture, even though we will be hated for it. All right? Verse 5, as we tear down speculation, this is verse 10 of uh, chapter uh, 10, 2 Corinthians, verse 5, as we tear down speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And are ready to listen to this. To punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is fulfilled. Look at We're to correct those who are, who are walking and living in false doctrine and theology. And if they don't repent, they have to be punished by being, we have to be separate from them. We have to mark them and avoid them. And, 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 and we pray for their repentance. Verse 7. You are looking at things as they are outwardly. If anyone is confident in himself that he is Christ, let him consider this again within himself, that just as he is Christ, so also are we. For even if I boast somewhat further about our authority, talking about himself and the other apostles, I'm sure, which the Lord gave, listen to this, for building you up and not for tearing you down, I will not be put to shame. For I do not wish to seem as if I would terrify you by my letters. For they say, his letters are weighty and strong. Talking about Paul's letters to Corinthians. That's what it looks like. For his letters are weighty and strong, but his personal presence is weak and his words contemptible. Well, when you speak the truth of God, when you speak truth, it is divisive. And if you're not of the Lord's, if you're not one of his sheep, you're not hearing the voice of God. And yeah, you're going to think that the word of God is contemptible if you're not one of his. Verse 8 again. For even if I boast somewhat further about our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up and not for tearing you down, I will not be put to shame. Verse 9 Chapter 10, 2 Corinthians. For I do not wish to seem as if I would terrify you, terrify you by my letters. For they say his letters are weighty and strong, but his personal presence is weak and his words contemptible. Verse 11. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in word by letters when absent, such persons we are also indeed when present. You practice what you preach. For we do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who commend themselves. But when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are without 
understanding. You compare everything to the Word of God. Even our dear brothers like Mike Riccardi and John MacArthur and Vody Bauckham and Paul Washer and Steve Lawson and, and R.C. Sproul, anybody. Pastor Pete Ernst, Pastor Jonathan Daniel Turner, Pastor Roland Harrell, Pastor Rob Kimsley. We compare what they say to the Word of God always. We respect our pastors, our pastors, because if they have truly been called by God to the pulpit to be under shepherds of the flock, the church of God, the bride of Christ, what an awesome and scary place to be behind the pulpit teaching God's word. We are to respect and support our pastors who have been called to this role, but they are not, none of them are above reproach. You be careful when you approach a pastor, of course, if you believe maybe they might be in error somewhere in Scripture. But we do it with love, patience, gentleness, kindness, but we do it in obedience to Christ and His Word. So that's one of the things that John MacArthur was talking about. What Mike McCurdy was talking about was truth. And he went from John 18. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to cut this, guys. I, I don't want it to be too long. I'm not going to list all the scriptures that he gave for this. But he started in verse... Let's start in verse 36 of chapter 18, Gospel of John. 36, Jesus answered... My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be, deliver, be delivered over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Therefore Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You yourself said, I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. My sheep hear my voice, and they come to me. A stranger's voice they won't go to. If you're elect, if you have been predetermined, if you've been elect by God in his foreknowledge, by the triune God from eternity past, whom came together in one accord before the foundation of the world, and you were chosen for salvation, and when you're born into this world, the gospel message of salvation will come to you. You'll be regenerated, born again, being able to hear the truth, you will hear the voice of God, the truth, the gospel message of salvation. Christ the Son came to the earth, the Father sent. He obeyed his Father, died for us on the cross because of our sin. Our sin was imputed to Jesus Christ. His righteousness was imputed to us who were damned and under the curse of sin. Read Ephesians chapter 2. We were children of wrath, children of Satan. Our father was the devil. We were liars and thieves and adulterers and murderers and fornicators, homosexuals, effeminates, you name it. That's what we were. We not only had original sin, we had our sin. We stood condemned under the wrath of God and only in Christ could we be saved and have been saved. That's the gospel message. That's the good news. That's the truth. And everything within God's word, the truth, 
The, in the gospel is embedded the truth of not only the salvation plan of our redemption, but the entirety of the truth of who the living God is. The eternal living God, the one God of salvation, the one and only God spoken of in Isaiah chapter 45, right? Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3, I believe it is. Let me rush there. I am Yahweh, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising to the setting of the sun that there is no one besides me. I am Yahweh, and there is no other. The one forming light and creating darkness, producing peace and creating calamity, I am Yahweh who does all these. This is the God of the Bible. This is truth. This is our Savior, our God, our Holy Spirit, the great, awesome Trinity, the one God existing in three persons, co-equal, all divine. This is the God of the Bible. Sorry, I haven't been on here for a while. We are so blessed. We are so blessed and we are so honored that our Lord granted to us and gave us in His mercy and in His grace and in His love gave us salvation. If He didn't choose, nobody would be saved. Father, I thank you for this conference that's going on at Grace Community Church, the Shepherds Conference. There's over 5,000 men, pastors, who I pray and hope, oh Lord, I pray and hope that each one of those men were really called to the pulpit. I pray work and be with them, Holy Spirit. Uplift them. Give them the strength when this conference is over to go and be bold and to go before your chosen that you've given to them to be under shepherds that they may impart to us your word through their time at the shepherds conference to become more bold and to have it settled in their hearts that where they are at for from your calling behind the pulpit and leading those and discipling those to become more like your son the lord jesus christ because that's what we're called to do, we are to, we are to work out our own salvation and fear and trembling. What does that mean? We are, we are being sanctified. We will be fully sanctified when we enter into your presence. But you gave us all of this before the foundation of the world. I have a brother I love very much who believes that you can lose your salvation. You cannot lose your salvation. You cannot use the verse when our Lord's talking about the vine and the branches and that the, the branches that don't produce fruit, he takes off and he casts them into the fire. That's not a verse that talks about losing our salvation because we know that the foundation will go through the fire. And for those things that we've done in the name of the Lord, the gold, the silver, those things are, that will go through the fire and not burn up will come out the other end and we will be giving those things to the Lord. But it says for those who built on it hay and stubble, we will be saved because of the fire, because the foundation is Christ. We don't want to be that, but we cannot lose our salvation because that would make God a liar. And God, we know, does not lie. Only Satan 
is a liar and he's the father of it. No, my brothers and sisters, we are, we are saved in Christ and we cannot lose our salvation. Please don't take one verse without weighing it against all other verses. We have to be really careful. That's why many can't be called to the pulpit because you can take one verse and lead many people astray. Anyhow, Father, thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, 20 minutes still. Listen, I love all you guys. Um, again, I'm nothing. I don't claim to be anything. Uh, I just like to get on here and do this every so often. It keeps me sharp, keeps me humble. And um, be in the Word every day. We cannot compromise. Okay, God bless. Aloha from Maui, everybody.